Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mark, Endoscopic Spine Specialist. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part series, Cervical Facet Syndrome. In part one, we took a look at the problem and why things hurt. In part two, we're going to take a look at treatment options for you. And there are four. The last is the unique and novel one, which is why I posted this video. Uh, since the typical and traditional treatment of rhizotomy is temporary, always needing to be retreated at 9 to 12 months. This offers a permanent treatment so we can actually cure pain rather than managing it. Okay, well let's get started. This is uh, part two, cervical facet syndrome treatment options. I'm Dr. Tony Mark, endoscopic spine specialist. And this presentation will look at the four topics of your four treatment options. Number two, the problem with traditional rhizotomy or radiofrequency. Three, it'll show an endoscopic laser surgery. And four, it'll show an interview with the patient the day after his endoscopic laser surgery on his cervical facets. I'm also going to introduce a new laser treatment here at the end, to, a way to avoid multiple radiofrequency treatments. And that's the whole point of this is to show a permanent uh, treatment or cure for cervical facet syndrome as opposed to the rhizotomy which is always temporary. All right well there's always there's four options for treatment of cervical facet syndrome if you happen to have that and option one is fusion surgery. In my opinion this is way too much treatment the risk reward I don't think is good. What if it doesn't work? You've got the fusion and who knows what other problems it could generate and uh, just gives rise to other problems and complications as well. Well, two, option two is the prolotherapy and I think prolotherapy is a safe and effective way to treat this and it's been shown that way in the literature. Uh, it might work but it's not a common practice and finding a, a really experienced prolotherapy expert in your community may not be that easy. Option three, rhizotomy is the current standard for pain management physicians treating cervical facet syndrome. This is safe and effective, but has one major shortcoming. The pain always returns, usually after nine to 12 months. Option four, which is the reason for this, is to show the endoscopic laser surgery way to treat this problem of cervical facet syndrome with the uh, uh, very minimal surgery. The results can be permanent. Uh, there are some results that have been published to demonstrate the efficacy of this, and there's minimal risk with minimal recovery, as you're going to see. The question, can we eliminate your pain if we destroy the medial branches, the medial nerve branches? And the short answer is yes. Let's take a look at the anatomy here. We can see a segment of the cervical spine. We can see the spinal cord going down the central canal, uh, the um, dorsal rami or the exiting nerve roots coming out that go to your shoulder, arm, hands. And the branching off this is the, called the medial branch. Medial branch goes backward and then goes down to the facet joint where it, shook, th it throws out a little spray of nerve endings, and these are sensory nerve endings. This is just a statistical drawing. This was uh, based on a dissection. The circle is the facet joint, and the uh, arrow is pointing to the statistical uh, place where the medial branches would be crossing over before they go back into the and innervate the facet joint. Well the traditional rhizotomy burns the medial branches and really what this is doing is just denaturing the uh, protein inside the nerve but the nerve remains intact it's not divided so it's successful but temporary because the nerve heals itself and the temporary protein uh, go, is able to heal itself and the nerve then starts to function again, usually after 9 to 12 months. That's why it's temporary. It's just the denaturing of the protein lasts for a little while, but when the nerve heals itself, it goes right back to hurting again. 
Well, can the pain relief be permanent? Yes, it can. How do I know this? Well, there's a published paper in 2010 in which Dr. Hoff and myself published a paper uh, for debriding the facet, cervical facets using a novel technique with the laser. And the, uh, uh, so the surgery was performed with the laser. And what did it show? With a minimum of three year follow-up, which is really a pretty long time for uh, any clinical paper, 77% got at least 50% improvement. And with a minimum of three year follow up, we assume that if the pain last the pain relief lasted three years, it was going to be permanent. So compare that to a standard rhizotomy, which never lasts more than nine to twelve months in terms of its relief. So with endoscopic laser surgery, the pain is cured, not managed. Okay, let's take a look at a real life example. We'll show the symptoms. We'll show the cervical MRI. How do we prove it's facet pain? We'll show an endoscopic surgery, and then we'll interview this patient the day after his surgery. Well, the patient's background. Scott's a 46-year-old. He gave me permission to use him as a case study. He had increasing pain in the right side of his neck, increasing pain in the top of his shoulder, and the MRI didn't show much. Here's the uh, MRI. We can see that there's some disc, uh, maybe bulges or protrusions uh, at the 5-6 level, but there's not much in the way of foraminal stenosis. Essentially, there's not really a good way to con conclusively diagnose facet syndrome on an MRI. The facet block, however, gave him complete relief of his pain, which did show that he did have facet syndrome, and I recommended an endoscopic facet debridement using the laser. <clears throat> Before we look at a video of the surgery, let's do a quick review of the anatomy. We can see that the uh, ascending facet is present on the left. So he, he's laying face down and face down. His head is to the right, feet is to the left. We have the ascending facet on the left. We have the descending facet on the right. And then the yellow line is representative of the facet joint. So these are what move and pop and crack and feel you know popping and crackling in your neck when you're turning and twisting these joints are all moving okay in this video in this picture here it will be very similar to the photograph I just showed except a little bit uh, more close up this is the de this is the edge of the descending facet this is the ascending facet we cannot see the tip of this over here is the head over here is the foot this is actually the capsule has been removed here which would normally be attached here and then of course down here you can see the edge of it so this is the picture of the uh, facet capsule after it's been removed and we can now see the facet joint of the cervical spine well what's an endoscopic facet debridement look like this is the facet after the capsule's been removed. So we're actually looking into the joint here. That's the edge of the descending facet. And you can see the motion occurring as well as I'm gently twisting his neck. But there was a surprise uh, in Scott's case. Uh, he had a large osteophyte, which is a bony projection and gives rise to actually a hard stop. So you have a, a, a piece of bone that's protruding it can actually act as a bony stop, but also act as an extra piece of bone that's pinching the soft tissues. So let's take a look and see how we deal with that. So the projection down to the bottom, going towards 6 o'clock, is the osteophyte. And you can see that it's uh, fairly kind of prominent, but we're just removing it with the uh, laser. The laser does good for bony removal of small bones like this. It does not do that well with larger bones uh, like in the lumbar spine, etc. So let's take a look at him the day after surgery. Yeah, this is Scott Helene. About nine months ago, I started having uh, shooting pains and constant headaches in my head. And over the period of time of having gone to chiropractic, 
care, injections, um, just stubborn, leaving it alone. I finally found out it might have facet syndromes, went and saw Dr. Mork. Yesterday he went in and worked on it with some burring and laser and what they do. And today I'm up, ready to go, have no pain that I can feel, a little stiffness. Uh, I took one pain pill last night, don't feel the need today, and ready to go. Feels good. Here we go. This is a small pen peel and it's being pushed underneath the descending facet. So you can see the white uh, capsular tissue which is loaded with nerves. It's between the joints. So that little little uh, metallic pen peel is being pushed between the facet joint and you can see how the soft tissue could be getting pinched. this video we can see the laser uh, actually removing the osteophyte of the descending facet. Below the laser you can see the facet joint and it, as you notice it does create quite a bit of debris. This is all in a complete water environment uh, so the water is continuously cycling through the operative site. Actually, the water is acting as a hydraulic expander. That's what's retracting the tissues. And the laser is just taking away the capsule and the osteophyte of the bone to remove the pain nerves. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, learned something from the uh, different ways to treat cervical facet syndrome. And uh, in my opinion, the laser offers the most permanent uh, way to deal with this I don't, I'm not into managing pain. I'd like to cure it when possible. Thanks for watching. If you've got any other questions, please look at the website, drtonymark.com, or give the office a call. Thank you.